Welcome to this video tutorial on graphs of piecewise functions. In this video we will consider two examples. The first, on the screen currently, involves taking the algebraic representation of a piecewise function and sketching its graph. The second example we'll consider is, given a graph, writing the algebraic representation. So first of all on the problem on the screen, we'll start with the first piece of the function, which is a reciprocal function that we're looking at. That reciprocal function would have its center point at 2, comma, 1. And we will go ahead and mark that point 2, comma, 1 on our grid and draw in the new axes that would be based around that point. So we'll draw in the vertical axis we'll draw in the horizontal axis for the new grid centered at 2 comma 1. Now when we draw the reciprocal function normally we go over 1 up 1 since the reciprocal of 1 is 1. However the negative on the function means that we will go in the opposite direction. So instead of going up 1 we'll go down 1. And the 3 in the numerator means that we're multiplying the y value by 3 so instead of going down 1, we're going down 3 and putting our point. Then with the reciprocal function, normally we would go over 2, down a half, but we're multiplying it by 3, so we'll go down 3 halves. And finally, from the center point, we would go over a half, typically down 2, but we're multiplying it by 3, so we'll go down 6. Draw that in getting close to each of the axes, but not crossing. Those are asymptotes. Draw it in like so. And there's the one piece of that reciprocal graph. However, please be mindful that we only want the portion where x is greater than 2. And that's what we've just drawn, the portion where the x values are greater than 2. So that takes care of the first piece of this piecewise function. For the second piece of our piecewise function, it's when the function is just equal to 4, that means it's a horizontal line, y equals 4. We only want the portion of that horizontal line between x equals negative 1 and x equals positive 2. So we'll draw it in like so. That would be a horizontal line with a y value of 4 starting at x equals negative 1 and ending at x equals 2. And for the final piece of our piecewise function, it's a pretty radical portion, a square root function. We need to manipulate that formula before we can graph. So inside it'll be a negative x minus 1. And then we factor out the negative inside. So it'll be negative the quantity x plus 1, which means that the center point is at negative 1 comma 6. We'll put that point up on our grid. But now two things. Due to the negative out front of our function, that means that this square root would open down. And due to the negative inside the function, that means the graph will be opening to the left. So normally we would go over 1, up 1, because the square root of 1 is 1. But now we're going over to the left and down 1. Don't overlook the fact that we have the 2 out front, though. So instead of going down 1, we're going to go down 2 because we're also multiplying the y values by 2. With a square root, then, we're going to go over 4, this time to the left. And the square root of 4 is 2. So ordinarily, we would go down 2 but we're multiplying it by 2, so we're going to go down 4. We'll draw that piece in, and there we go. Now before we finish the piecewise function, it's always good to go back and look at domains. So for the first piece, the reciprocal piece, we wanted x greater than 2. That's what we have. For the second piece, the horizontal line, we wanted x to be between negative 1 and positive 2. It is. And for the third and final piece, we wanted x less than negative 1. 
in order to make that happen, instead of being a solid or closed dot at that spot, it needs to be an open dot at that location. This was a piecewise function, so it should pass the vertical line test when we're done, and that is the case. This would be the graph of our piecewise function. Now for our second example. Given this graph, we want to determine the piecewise function algebraically. So let's take one portion of the graph at a time, starting with this part over here. Now that part is going to be a parabola. Its center point, or its vertex, is left 2 up 3. So it's at negative 2 comma 3, which means that that will be x plus 2, the quantity squared, plus 3. However, there's more to it. It's opening down, so we'll have a negative sign out front. And notice that it's going down 2 when we go over 1. And when we go over 2 from the vertex, it's down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, which means we vertically multiplied by 2. When we go to write the domain, x equals negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, it starts at negative 4, but it's not actually equal to negative 4. So x has to be greater than negative 4. And then we can say less than or equal to negative 1. For the next piece of this piecewise function, in this region shaded magenta, we have an absolute value function. The absolute value is centered at 2 comma negative 2. So we'll have the absolute value of x minus 2 minus 2. It's opening up, so it's a positive out front. And when we go over 1, it goes up 1, so there's no multiple. Now all we have to do is specify the domain. Well, the domain starts at negative 1 and goes through 3. So we could say negative 1 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 3. However, we need to be clear this is a function. So we should have one of the pieces that we automatically go to for each value of x. In this scenario, we would have two pieces that would both pertain to x equals negative 1. When that happens, and when they line up at the same point on the graph, what we can do is just pick one of the pieces to make a strict inequality. In other words, to just say it has to be less than negative 1. And then the other piece can have the or equal to option. For the final portion of this graph, over here, it's a square root. The root starts at 3 comma negative 1. So this is going to be the square root of x minus 3. Make sure it's clear that that's where the square root closes, minus 1. When we go to the first point, we go over 1, up 3. When we go to the second point, we go over 4 up 6. So we've really taken and multiplied those y values by 2 because normally it would be over 1 up 1 but we're going up 3. Normally it would be over 4 up 2 but we're going up 6. We've already used x equals 3 so even though the square root kind of starts at x equals 3 we're going to say 3 is less than x and then it goes forever and ever and ever so we could write it that way or we could also write it as just x is greater than 3. That would be our piecewise function for the graph that was provided. It had three pieces. We have them written out. 